Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the steps I took to install solar array in my 4th generation 4Runner. This video is mostly going to be about how I applied it to the 4th generation 4Runner and not all the complications of an actual solar system, solar array. There's lots of videos on YouTube that will explain all the different mechanics and parts of that. So in the back here, I decided to hide everything underneath this plastic panel right here. As you can see, I have uh, what turns on the inverter. I have two outlets, USBs, a USB-C, and I just have another USB here. And these lights actually, or that switch is actually to power these two lights right here. The inverter is hidden underneath this. It's 1000 watt Renogy inverter. Once I finish doing an overview, I'm going to do a more in-depth of videos I took before this went on so you can see everything that's behind here. Behind this panel, I have a switch that goes to the inverter. And then this is a switch that turns on the actual inverter itself. This just disconnects the battery from it completely. Underneath the passenger seat here, I have the solar charge controller. It's a little hard to see, but I have video before the seat was in of how it's hooked up down there. Won't be able to get much of a good angle, but I'll show you in a second. On the hood is a 100 watt panel from Linsun Solar. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood. So here's the 12 volt, 100 milliamp hour battery from Redudo. Redudo. I know there's a proper way to pronounce it, but I forgot it. It's strapped down to a battery tray that's bolted to the body. The solar panel cable runs down here and right between the weather stripping that seals the hood to prevent water from getting in. It then is connected to two more cables that run through the firewall into the solar charge controller. These run through the same hole in the firewall. Soon I'll be making a custom heat shield that will go along the battery, have a hole for the intake and cut off right here to keep it a little bit cooler over here so the battery performs a little bit better. Might also get a fan in this hole because this is where the original intake goes to draw some more cold air into here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a voiceover of the clips I took while installing this to further explain how it works and how everything's been routed throughout the car. So here you can better see how the solar charge controller is mounted underneath the passenger seat. It's a 30 amp energy charge controller, which is a bit overkill for my situation, but two solar cables go through the footwell and into the firewall, or through the firewall into the engine bay, and the two battery cables go under the carpet and to the negative and positive bus bars in the back to charge the battery. The charge controller itself is backed up to the footwell's air conditioning to better cool the heat sink. Since it is mounted horizontally, you're supposed to mount these vertically, helps it cool it a little bit better. And then under here, I have the Bluetooth module so I can monitor the battery level and charging from the app. And then here's the two cables that come in through the firewall. They go to the solar panel. I better fitted them in that rubber grommet so there was a seal on that. Here's the switch, positive bus bar, and inverter. And here I am making cables to fit all these things together. So the switch connects to the positive bus bar, and then the positive battery cable connects to the switch right there. And then that runs underneath the carpet right there. The negative bus bar goes right here and connects to the inverter from there. Everything is just mounted with double-sided tape here just to Here's the negative battery cable that goes to the bus bar right here. Here's how I mounted the boxes on the top. I just used a small nuts and bolts for both of those to secure them in place. And then over here is the cables, the um, single USB plugs in right there. The neutral ground and live wires for the two outlets plug in right here. And then the ethernet cable for the remote switch plugs in right there. And that's where you turn it to remote. Here's everything plugged in together. Uh, I was able to fit the extra ethernet cord up in here to keep it all the way. So yeah guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments about this, I will uh, do my best to answer them if you leave them in the comment section. I'm going to leave a list, or I'm gonna leave links to all the products I used down below as well. I think the total came out to no more than about $1,300, including all the wire and extras and stuff like that. So yeah.